What factors does a school consider in weighing the accused student's request for confidentiality? Attorney Mark A. Satawa explains. In most cases, the school will honor a student's request to remain anonymous or confidential until the formal complaint stage. Once the formal complaint is issued, the claimant can no longer stay anonymous because the accused student, the respondent, has a due process right to know claimant's identity. The claimant typically is asked to sign the formal complaint. In the situation where the claimant says, I don't want the school to go forward because I don't want my identity revealed, and the school engages in the process of determining whether they're going to go forward anyway, the factors they would consider in making that determination are as follows. Does the respondent have a history of Title IX misconduct? How serious is the accusation involved by this claimant in this particular instance? How egregious is the alleged conduct involved by the respondent? And perhaps most importantly, do they have witnesses and evidence that would allow them to pursue the Title IX investigation and grievance procedures without the claimant's cooperation? In other words, were there additional eyewitnesses? Are there collaborative statements either by way of email, text, social media? Are there recordings? Is the conduct caught on dorm or apartment complex security video camera? If they can make the case out without the claimant's cooperation and the school determines that the conduct is severe enough or egregious enough by the respondent, they may proceed forward, which again would cause a conflict between the claimant's FERPA rights to remain anonymous and the respondent's due process right to know who it was that initially accused them. When you hire Satawa Law, PLLC, you can rest assured knowing your case is in capable and expert hands. We will fight tirelessly in order to defend your rights and protect your future.